Hello and welcome to Thought Provoking Tech. I'm Zach and in today's video, I'm going to walk you through on how to set up the Synology Drive application on your Windows based PC. So guys, without further delay, let's go ahead and get right to it. To get started, head over to Synology.com and then click on the support tab at the top left of the screen. In the drop down that appears, click on the download center. From there, you'll now be able to enter your model number of your Synology in the search bar, or you can simply scroll down through the list to find the Synology that you have. Once that loads, you'll be able to see all the applications that you can download that are able to be ran in correlation to your Synology. So the one we're looking for is called the Drive Client. The first one you will see though is the Cloud Station Drive. That is not what you want. That is the older version. The Drive application actually replaces the Synology Cloud Station. It's a newer version. It has better collaboration features and so on and so forth. So you'll want to find the Drive Client, download that, and then we'll be able to walk through the standard installation process. After you get through the standard installation process, it'll open the program, and then you'll be greeted to a screen that asks for your Quick Connect ID, your username and password. So your username and password, of course, are gonna be the username and password for your Synology user that you're connecting. The Quick Connect ID is gonna be something that you have set up on your Synology that allows you to remotely connect to your Synology over the internet without having to deal with things like port forwarding and so on and so forth. So enter those details, and if you don't know those details, uh, ask your admin who has set up your Synology. After entering your credentials and clicking next, if you did have the enable SSL data transmission encryption button checked, it will pop up a message saying that the SSL certificate is not trusted. This is fine. It's because the Synology uses a self-signed certificate. So go ahead and click recede anyway. From there, you'll be brought to the main screen with two different rows of icons. The first is your drive server and the second is your local computer. So we're going to click on the edit button on the drive server to choose which shared folder on the Synology that we're going to synchronize with our computer. So here you'll see everything that your admin has set up as a shared folder or a team folder through the drive application. So choose the one you want to synchronize data from. Now click on your local computer and click the edit button. Here you'll be able to create a folder on your local computer by, with the button in the top right of this window on where you actually want the data to be synchronized to. So whether that is a secondary drive on your computer, if you have a desktop or a laptop with a secondary drive, uh, or it is simply underneath your documents folder or something like that. So go ahead and create a folder, name it whatever you want it to be named, and then click next. So from here, you now have the folder on your Synology that is being synchronized as well as the local folder that is being synchronized to. So now that you have set up a basic sync process between your Synology server and your local computer, you can now go to the advanced options button in the bottom left to further configure how the data is actually synchronized between your computer and your Synology. So clicking on that, you'll see three uh, tabs across the top, the first of which is the folder tab. From here, you'll be able to configure which folders are actually synchronized to your local computer. So for example, if there's a subfolder with data that doesn't apply to you at all and you don't want to waste storage space on your local computer or possibly bandwidth if you're while on the go, you're using a mobile hotspot. If you don't want to waste storage space or bandwidth, you simply deselect that folder that you don't want to synchronize. If you do deselect every folder, it will still synchronize any root files in the main folder. So if you do just have a couple files in the root folder that you need to synchronize, but don't want to synchronize any subfolders, you can easily do that too. The file filter is another thing I want to talk about. The file filter allow you to uh, choose to not synchronize certain files. So the file filter allows you to, for example, if you have an engineering folder and there's the engineering file types, say for example, you can't open those file types, but the engineers export a PDF that you can't open. You can use the file filter by entering a asterisk dot the file extension to completely not sync any of those file types. So for example, with our company, we use Autodesk Inventor. So we can use asterisk.ipt, which is the file type that Autodesk Inventor uses. And then if you want to synchronize that engineering directory, you'll only get the PDFs that the engineers have exported. And that way you're not wasting space on your computer with files that you can't even edit. So you can also use this to not synchronize a certain file. So say for example, you have a rather large file on your server that you don't want to synchronize. Instead of using the asterisk key, which is a essentially tells you that every file type of that um, extension don't sync, you can actually type in the exact file name. So for example, you have Bob's file.ipt, you can actually type in Bob's file.ipt and it won't synchronize just that select file. 
The final tab across the top is the sync mode. There are three different types of sync modes for the Synology Drive application. The first of which is two-way sync, and this is likely what you're familiar if you've used Dropbox, OneDrive, or any of those similar applications, where all the data from the cloud is gonna be synchronized to your computer, and all the data from your computer will be synchronized to the cloud. In the case of your Synology and your local computer, all the data that people add to that team folder will be synchronized down to your computer, and all the files that you add or edit will be synchronized back to the Synology server. So this is the kind of standard sync profile that you are likely used to. You have two additional sync profiles, the first of which is download data from the drive server only. So this is a useful for like a read only mode for getting data from your Synology server. So if you accidentally delete a file or if you edit a file and you don't want those changes to be transmitted back to your Synology, this could be useful for kind of just accessing files on the go but you don't want to have any edit permissions to those files. The final type that I want to bring up is one-way upload. This could be useful if you just need to upload files to a shared folder that other people can access, but you don't need to download everything else that is being transmitted. This could be a good way to save ba data bandwidth, uh, especially if you're on a mobile hotspot. So for example, say you have a media directory and you're shooting video or taking pictures remotely, you wanna be able to upload those pictures, but you don't have to download everything on that media folder to your computer. You can simply use the one-way upload. So all the data that you throw to that folder will be uploaded, but you won't have to worry about anything that someone else is adding or all the data that's already existing in that folder being downloaded to your computer. After you have finished choosing all the advanced features that you want to enable on your Synology sync profile, you'll then be able to click the next button. This will bring up the option of enabling the share with me folder. If you choose to sync this, you will now be able to change where that file is actually synchronized to your computer, or you can say maybe later. It is very easy to enable this later on, but this is a cool feature that if you have multiple people using your Synology and multiple people using the Drive application, they can share files with other people and not have to worry about synchronizing an entire shared folder, but they could simply use a shared with me feature to send a file to review or possibly a file that someone needs for a presentation using the shared with me functionality. So if you do choose maybe later, you will to create this shared with me folder down the road if you choose to later on start utilizing it by clicking the create button in the top left. The create button will also allow you to synchronize an additional team folder to your local computer. So you can use that to enable the shared with me uh, option down the road, or you can also utilize it to um, simply synchronize a, an additional team folder. So you can have essentially as many team folders synchronized to your computer as you want, assuming that you have the storage space available. So that's it, and that you are now ready to start synchronizing data from your Synology to your local computer. I hope you found this video informative. If you did, give it a big like. I greatly appreciate that. Also, if you're not already an existing subscriber, smash that subscribe button to stay tuned for more great videos from Thought Provoking Tech. Also guys, I hope you like this set that is starting to take shape behind me. I'm working on creating more professional, possibly better looking videos. So I hope all the work that I'm putting into is, is starting to show a little bit. Uh, there's a lot of work to do still. This is definitely not finished by any stretch of the imagination. So I will be continuing to work on this. Uh, but once again, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And until next time, Zach out.